Hello and welcome to the pilot episode of Artists in Their Studios, a production of CSN Art Galleries and CSN Art and Art History Program. My name is Jeff Fulmer and I am the gallery coordinator at the College of Southern Nevada. Our first featured artists for Artists in Their Studios is Anne M. Hoff. Anne M. Hoff is a professor of printmaking and drawing at the College of Southern Nevada. Her work is in university, museum, and corporate collections across the United States. She exhibits her work widely in local and international portfolio, invitational, and educational conferences and workshops. Anne splits time between her home studio and her stone lithography studio, which is part of Best Arts for You Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada. We join Anne in her home studio. Good morning and good day. This is Anne Hoff. I'm letting you see a sneak peek of the inside of my house because uh, one of the requests I had in the artist studio was to talk about my different workspaces. And um, something that took me a while and accumulation of a couple decades in planning was to build my own studio in the back of my house. But let's go ahead and turn around and head out my backyard. So here we are, what I usually do when I'm heading out to my studio. And you can see this little tough shed in the back is actually uh, what I created for my space and ran electric out to it. So it's kind of in part of my, my big green backyard. It's just behind the house. And in this COVID era, my little personal uh, she shed art gallery has become more of this school. This is what a real studio looks like. Uh, several times I'll go around and try to clean up, organize, but ultimately between teaching and my own work, I'm constantly rearranging, looking for stuff. Honestly, I think a warehouse space would be good for me with all my weird stuff. But some accumulation of different projects I've been working on, some of my uh, prints on cloth that I have hanging up and draping till I assemble them for future projects. Old work, a lot of it on paper, rolled up, stored above. Hi, how are you? Um, my favorite work chair that has moved with me Hi, right? across the country. It's an awesome chair. If you find a good old chair, you keep it. It is the best thinking chair you can use. Some older prints. And over here you can see my workstation for my demos and talks to my students online. So, you know, <laughs> My house is very organized. My studio is a little more of a jumble of everything I'm thinking about and doing. But you can use and accommodate a lot of spaces easily. Um, nothing happens overnight. It's all been kind of a work in progress. You can see some of the works friends have given me, things that I've Accumulated. So that's a quick view of my lovely, sloppy, chaotic, personal studio, tiny spot for your backyard. Uh, and I'm here to show you something that is kind of special if you can manage this, and that is to do your networking no artists, talk to people, and a lot of times you can luck out and create a group facility where several people pool their resources and create a workshop or a studio. Some good friend and her family decided they were going to try starting their own little business called it Best Arts For You. Ask me to be a part of that. So come on in. 
and you're going to see <laughs> what it looks like kind of a busy, typical workspace in our foyer. Fiber artist. Another one is uh, Bobby Ann Howe, who does a lot of beautiful paperwork, drawings, three dimensional forms. And we all share this kind of office space. Display a little bit of our work, but mainly it's our space to open to the public and show people and also share play our work here in the shop for people to see. Yeah, they're all for purchase. But it kind of really functions more as a shared studio space. So now come on back in to the second section, which is more of the kind of the big workstation. And you'll see, and I'm going to talk about each different area, but that this is part of my equipment for the stone lithograph. Production studio looks like it's being used and lived in. And so I'll walk you through a few of the different areas that I inhabit here in this end of the studio. We share in the costs and caretaking and maintenance licensing fees, etc. to use this space and to operate it as a solely women-owned business. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through some of the working stations I have here in Stone with Doctor. These are Bavarian limestones. They're very thick. They're a little heavy. They've been milled and cut and flattened. So in a way, it's a reusable drawing surface that can be sanded down and reworked multiple times. And it's our pretty hands-on and so we're using a type of a grit to lay down with water and then take those two stones together or another method and you physically move the stone around the surface and over time when I started out as an undergrad student I was introduced to stone lithography and that's when I really decided printmaking was my deal because I really love to draw but I also really love texture. I like to work through with technique and create multiples for different exploration of media and sculptural elements. So in a crazy way, it's a very uh, intensive technical process to complete, but you literally have to know what it is that you really are drawn to and love as an artist. And regardless of things that happen for uh, time involvement, technique, you have to kind of follow through with your passion. That's kind of what, that's really what we're about. And that's what I do. And it may seem uh, really nutty considering, but I really do love it. It brings me a lot of joy and I really feel a sense of accomplishment and um, peaceful accomplishment when I work on these stones. All right, so now we're at my uh, workstation area. As it were, um, I have a big table behind me here. I had these tables made custom, so they really could bear the weight of a couple hundred pounds for stones. And as I work on them, I work on different surfaces depending on how I feel. But for instance, um, what I have right here, this is a heavy duty lift, because I don't lift these couple hundred pound stones myself. Instead, it's on this dolly system. And this box on top of my dolly is actually something that was created by my buddy, Daryl Dupry. And he uh, kind of made me a nice little stone easel to use that I can adjust and change the height, lift and lower as I need it. I do a lot of line work on this. And I can spend several hours just enjoying building up my drawing slowly and methodically or going back in and or taking elements out. The thing I really like about uh, lithography is it's very directly related to drawing, which is one of my great joys, in that I try to treat the stone the same way I would a piece of paper. 
I don't really do much preliminary studies. I work straight onto the stone. I work with different chemical processes to adjust and change things, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. <clears throat> to me, it's all kind of a big experiment that I'm exploring and kind of pushing my boundaries because it's an unforgiving kind of technique. Uh, it's like this tug and pull that I get when I work. So I'm always kind of setting up problems and challenges as I work. If I want a really sure result, I'll stick to what I know. But I try to take advantage of the luxury of having a shop and a space to work to go ahead and experiment and see what happens. And if I can push my own boundaries as an artist even further, because as we know, as artists, this is a lifelong career and a lifelong learning process. There's no point where you have all the information. You just gain a little bit more. And one of the nice things about working in a cooperative space is that you have somebody else looking at your work and making suggestions or comments. And you have somebody to sound out about what you're going for and what you're thinking about. And that's what drew me to printmaking. I also have a stockpile of pieces that I've done over time that I keep in stores and uh, some flat files that was I was able to um, come into possession of. And I know when I was a student, I, I would look at what my instructors and other artists had for their facilities and such, and I thought, how did they get all that stuff? Wow, what did that take? And you know what it takes? It takes being aware and keeping in contact and checking things out, kind of being on your toes and being at the right place at the right time, honestly. But keep aware when you're making contacts and starting to facilitate your professional um, connections to always be modest and approachable. But eventually you'll find yourself like, hey, Hey, I'm living like that uh, artist lifestyle I kind of thought about all my life. Very cool. Uh, thank you, Anne, for sharing your studio with us, the, the background view of your studio behind the scenes. Again, um, I want to encourage you all to please share your questions in the chat. Um, there are several questions there. The first one that I have is from Jeannie. Um, do the mediums, styles, size of your work differ between the different studio locations? Yes. Can you hear me okay now, Jeff? Yes. Um, yeah, the stones actually have their own limitations, but part of why I, what I use the stones for is that I actually combine the prints occasionally to make larger scale things. Most of the time, I don't work super large. What I do is I work in segments and then attach and segment it together, sew it together, seam it together. Some of my older works, uh, all the way back from grad school, one of them was 11 feet by six feet. But that was all done in segments so that I use clear rods to uh, put through like, mirror, like curtains to assemble and hold the piece. So, my ultimate goal was not to do big flat paintings that cost a fortune a ship, but I like to work on flexible surfaces. And in the past, I actually worked for several years in theater production, painting sets and drops and constructing three-dimensional forms. And so that's when I realized, why am I working on a stiff surface when I can work on something flexible and uh, mobile to manipulate easier? Nope. So, my job in the gallery, I, I really appreciate that because um, artists always have to ship work to me. I always have to ship them back. And, and yeah. um, work that has flexibility is often easier for all of that. Cheaper. Cheaper. 
cheaper and easier. Yeah. Um, so I have several other questions. Alfonso um, asks, do you have a preference for each studio? My studio at home is where I do the weirdest stuff that nobody ever has to see. Um, I can really kind of work from my gut. If I show it, I show it. If I don't, it's mine or I can dismantle it. Um, I bring my little uh, fabric prints here into my home studio and leave them up for me to think about for a while, kind of gel on how I want to use those to assemble into a 3D or kind of um, installation based element. I don't know if anybody knew me back when I had my show there. But that is really what I really enjoy is making an encompassing environment for my pieces. Not that they're standing alone, but they're having a dialogue with each other. Very cool. Um, and Dave asks, uh, the drawings, do you do them on the spot? Or is it something that you recall based on memory or even from imagination? I do not do a lot of imagination. I use photo reference to get me started, but then I work from multiple sources. And then I also reimagine the surface. So it isn't a true copy. It becomes kind of a hybrid. I do spend a lot of time in the wilderness. So there's a lot of tactile observation and some memory that comes into play there. So in a weird kind of way, it's photo based, but it's not photo based. So it becomes Kind of an alteration. Okay. Um, Nancy asks, which studio space do you spend the most time in? Well, until this uh, COVID thing, <laughs> I actually tried to be in the group studio more because this one is available to me at all times. If I needed a quiet moment, someplace to sit, reflect, sketch when I felt the need, this is where I'd come. But because I'm paying rent in the other one, and my materials are unique. I try to be in there more than I do here. It actually is kind of a tug of war when I'm teaching at the college because I have to work in that studio also. So kind of juggling. Spreading yourself between three studios. Yeah, that's why I want a warehouse. So I can just, you know, if I feel like drawing today a big thing and throw paint on it, I can walk over and do that. So, so Nadia asks, how many hours uh, do you spend in your studio each day? Hmm. I'd say a couple if I'm really, if I have more time. Um, when I'm at the group shop, I'm not near home, so I'm freer to stay focused. And there I'll work maybe anywhere from four to six hours. But I do have work work every day for a couple hours. So if I have a good weekend, I'll spend major time on it, maybe 12 hours a day. For me, I always find deadlines are, are great things. Deadlines are me. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell people deadlines, if you have a deadline, think about how long it, you think it will take and then triple it. And that'll be the correct amount of time you need. I got a question that I, I think uh, uh, all of our students can appreciate. Is there a store or website where you can get good deals on used art equipment? Oh, go, go to uh, Craigslist. And also there are some, for me, there's a prints.com and used presses. I would Google different sources. And this is where your connections come in because I have connections with uh, art professors all over the West in a country. And if I put out the word that I'm looking for something, people will start to send me things. So the wider your network, the more help you get in that. Very cool. Um, we've got a lot of, a lot of questions coming in, so I don't know if we'll be able to get to all of these, okay. but, but uh, uh, another question um, asks if you're branded or, and do you sell your work and are you represented by any galleries? I'm, I'm represented by Priscilla Fowler here in town. Uh, branded, uh, I wouldn't say I'm branded. Um, that's never been my thing as a commercial venture, but I do make multiples. And I forget, what was the third part of the question? Um, do you sell your work? I do sell my work, sometimes uh, from the best arts, sometimes uh, privately, and sometimes through Priscilla. 
So anything is up for sale if you're interested. So an, another question, you've used the term tactile a few times. Hmm. It's obvious you enjoy the materia, materiality of printing. Um, why is it you don't do sculptures? Actually, I do do sculptures, you just didn't see any. <laughs> because um, one of the things is uh, on my to-do list is to redo my website. But I do take uh, the prints I have done and I work them in the 3D form. Like um, I've done this for, not just so much for myself all the time, but when I teach printmaking classes, one of the things that we do in printmaking is the final assignment, the students give it to me also. And so between me and all the students, we make enough of a print edition that we each get a print from everybody in that course. And one of those was 3D prints that I've done uh, so I, I do fabricate things 3D, but um, they're not as great as the 2D work and the quantity. Um, so Anne is part of the, the exhibition that just opened up virtually through CSN, the uh, 20, oh, yeah. 20, 2021 uh, CSN Art and Art History Faculty Exhibition, which you can find on our website, csnartgalleries.com, um, and link to that there. And she does have, uh, I think one of her, her images has some of her 3D work in it from a, a show yes. that she had at the CSN Gallery. Um, another question was, is stone print your favorite art form and why? <laughs> well, um, yes and no. I, there's something about it. When I was an undergraduate and I was introduced to stone lithography, there was something that clicked in me that became almost a spiritual experience. And that sounds really odd, but I really believe in some type of serendipity and sensitivity to certain materials that you have a kinship with. And that happened to be the stone lithography. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago, I got an opportunity to collect the materials again and use them and I jumped at the chance it's a it, it's like a love hate relationship, like any coupling or relationship, and there's something about that that drives me. Great, um, this one I, I find really interesting because I, I find myself doing this. Um, Jeannie's asking, what is the longest span of time you've ever kept a, a part of a sketch or a plan or an idea? that you've held on and then later acted on that to, to make a work of art? Oh my gosh. Um, now that I'm getting older, it's actually more like six to 10 years that, you know, because what I do, I actually still have some experimental prints that I have that I will go through my drawer and pull them out and use them again that I've completely forgotten about that become part of something. So I think, yeah, it can be a, a decade or more now that I go back and I reinvestigate a surface or material or drawing and find a different way to manipulate it. Um, so, so questions are still coming in, uh, um, but I have a, a couple of mine also. Uh, so do you have any examples of how your studio has propelled your artwork in a, in a brand new direction? How the, the physical space has informed your work? <laughs> well, I'd say the stone litho one would project my work in that I feel I have an investment made and I better work on that. So I try to incorporate the stones into a lot of different processes when I'm working. Even if I, you know, I wish I could expand the materials I use, but that's pretty much what it does. Also, the uh, scale of how I can store things affects that. That's why I said in my... Uh, little studio here, I wish I had a warehouse mm -hmm. because then the scale would increase exponentially. Um, you have studio mates at, at the Best Arts For You studio, mm -hmm. um, but the kind of, the stereotypic vision of an artist is being completely isolated and working all alone by themselves. Um, what do you see as the pros and cons of a, a shared studio? 
Well, there's give and take, just like having roommates when you were in college. <laughs> um, you have to kind of set some boundaries and guidelines and establish who spaces what, what the responsibilities are for different individuals. And, you know, the one thing is you kind of have your area that you can control and manage and you have to kind of reach agreements with people like right now in the COVID sphere, none of us are working in there at the same time because of the minor, uh, the singular circulation system we have and just to keep everybody safe. We have people of different ages. So that's kind of what we do. Do you ever uh, collaborate with your studio mates? In <laughs> yes. Artwork? Yes, sometimes I can just be sitting there and someone will come up and go, oh, by the way, you're going to do this with me. And this comes from different sources. This could be somebody 600 miles away. And they'll say, oh, by the way, <clears throat> I've already signed you up for this. <laughs> so the best you can do is take each opportunity that you can and just roll with it. That's how you kind of establish yourself and create, you know, notoriety. So we have, have one final question um, from Nadia. Uh, do you remember your first art piece that you did? Oh, I actually have that in here. <laughs> um, my, my parents have both passed away and I actually found when I dug around in the memory kit, um, Sharpie drawings that I did when I was four, three wow. or four. So those are, I guess, the first recorded ones I have. Well, very cool. Yeah. Um, so, so thank you so much. Um, I, I think that we've come to the end of our half an hour together. Uh, this has been Artists in Their Studios, a production of CSN Art Galleries and the CSN Art and Art History Program and featuring artist Ann M. Hoff. My name is Jeff Fulmer, and you can find CSN Art Galleries online on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and on our WordPress blog, where this, uh, this uh, video will be archived. Uh, thank you for joining us, and I'll leave you with the words of Pablo Picasso, everything you can imagine is real. <laughs>